Monday Night Raw is in Charlotte, North Carolina tonight, and this show's coming off the heels off of Evolution, which I have to say was my favorite WWE show of the year. Uh, in terms of the main roster shows, all the of the pay-per-views, it was my favorite. I really enjoyed the show. I thought it was great. Um, and my expectations are very low going into the show. I still am very critical of the build-up to the show. I am very critical of the way the matches were put together. I felt for the first ever one show, they should have done more. The matches should have been built up more. They should have had more intrigue. Half the matches barely got any TV time going into the show. And I'm still critical of that. So when they do this, this is going to be a yearly show, I think, for sure now. And uh, I think next year when they do it, they have to build the show up. But um, as a show, I loved it. I loved the show. Um, you know, I'm not talking to be a situation where I, I was going to go in and I'm thinking to myself, this is going to be WWE kissing their own ass for three hours. They're going to be patting themselves on the back. All this charity stuff. Oh, woman equality. We're having our own pay-per-view, even though every single other wrestling promotion has had the female woman's pay-per-view except you guys. And I was thinking, oh, great. Stephanie, there's going to be all Stephanie McMahon. Stephanie was barely on the show, thank God. Uh, we saw her at the end. The, they did the follow up, which I didn't mind. The big, you know, whole, all of them, you know, celebrating together. But as a show, I loved it. I, again, my favorite WWE main roster show of the year. Best pay per view, I think. Uh, not better than the TakeOver shows. The TakeOver shows were still better. But as a show, and you know, I, I didn't mind the situation of all the women crying. I think, you know what? It was a cruel moment. It was a really great moment to see them uh, have all that success. So I. I'm really happy for them, and I find the women's be a lot more uh, likable in general than the majority of them. So, uh, yeah, definitely, I'm, you know, it's weird, like, Sunday, after Sunday night, a lot of positive vibes for WWE. In five days, it's just going to be the complete opposite on fr- Friday afternoon from hell, man. And this is the go-home show to Saudi Arabia. Crown Jewel is Friday. It's going to be at Crown Jewel. We don't know where the fuck the show's going to take place, but it is what it is. So the show, again, it's in Charlotte. They start off with Baron Corbin in the ring, and Brock Lesnar's music plays, and uh, he comes out with Paul Heyman. Stuff is boring me. Um, yeah, again, we all know the situation here at Roma. It's just we're so unfortunate. WWE has been in the news so much this past week. It's like crazy, all these stories with you know Roman and then the Saudi Arabia and the positive story with Evolution. But uh, Braun comes out and... Um, uh, sorry, before that, Heyman's you know, running down stuff. Uh, running down, making sports references. They have a fight and then uh, Brock hits the F5 on Strowman. Uh, they show Michael Cole mentioning what happened with the Shield, so they're clearly using this. It's pretty disgusting how they're going to build that show up. Balor beat Lashley by disqualification. I don't want to talk about uh, Bobby Lashley. His act is one of my favorite, least favorite things on the show. I hate Leo Rush. He has go away. He with me. It's like I don't even want to see some of the stuff right now. Uh, I'm going to go quick. Uh, yes, the Baron Corbin on Raw is just, he's so bad. I he, I can't stand Baron Corbin. So they show Ronda Rousey and Becky Lynch the footage from the two of them yelling, going back and forth at each other, and now it's official. Out of nowhere. Holy shit. This is crazy. Ronda Rousey and Becky Lynch at Survivor Series. So I don't know how they're going to do Survivor Series this year. There's rumors that it's going to be Team Angle and Team Core, but I don't mind. But I hope it's not like Raw versus SmackDown. I'm so sick of that. It bores me to death. It's like Raw and SmackDown, and like they can't build up any of the matches because they're on different brands. I really hope they don't go that route. I think they can do better without having to go that route. Um, I'd rather just see, you know, you have your Raw matches and your SmackDown matches. But if they're going to do Ronda and Becky, it makes you think it's going to be like kind of a bragging rights style pay-per-view. So uh, up next, we have Trish Stratus and Lita back on Raw. I guess, I don't know, are they just back now permanently? I don't know. You had Lita, Trish teaming up with Natalia, Sasha Banks, and Bayley against the team of the Riot Squad. And Alicia Fox and Mickey James who are being accompanied by Alexa Bliss. So poor Alexa, still not clear to uh, wrestle. She comes out. I guess she's just going to be. Um, she's just going to manage uh, Mickey and Alicia. I guess they're a stable now. I'd just split them up. Find something better for Alexa. I don't know. Um, and also the other side, uh, Sasha and Bailey. I don't know what they're doing. I guess they're, they're aligned with Natalia. 
uh, to go along with Lita and Trish. Um, yeah, so Trish and Lita, I guess they're back. I don't know, but they did a lot here. They worked hard. Uh, Trish did her spots. Lita did her spots. They did the Lita hit a moonsault at the end to Liv Morgan. Uh, then they did the one thing I hated that pissed me off. Alicia Fox kicks out of a fucking heart attack, but then Natalia hits a sharp. So just Alicia Fox kicking out of a heart attack. Fuck that. They show Nia Jax backstage with Ember Moon. They're teasing a match between the two. Don't really care to see that. They show video package of the damn Brothers of Destruction. And I don't want to see this. It was funny. There's Elias. Um, one of the funniest parts of the whole show is Elias completely uh, uh, dissing Dana Brooke. Uh, a lot, Dana you know, stops Elias, asks her to play, play a song, and he just says no. I thought it was just really cool. He just uh, dissed her. Um, uh, he rips into Corbin. I guess he's a face, but Jinder Mahal attacks him. Uh, yeah, this stuff sucks. They had uh, Elias beat Jinder. So, John Cena's out of the World Cup. Bobby Lashley replaces him. So, good job, John Cena. Good for you, John. Uh, really respect him. They show ugh, just awful. The stuff at Kurt Angle. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, not any good. Oh, God. Stuff with this. I'm not, I'm gonna skip some of this. They show, uh, they show a really nice song. They show Rowan Reigns. He was, uh, I guess he was, uh, visiting cancer patients in, uh, child cancer patients in Dallas. That's actually really nice. Oh, he, I feel really bad for Rowan Reigns. I don't know, man. That whole story, it's so sad. The guy has cancer. It's just, holy shit. Does Roman Reigns has cancer? Is that really real? And it's leukemia. And the thing with leukemia, or not just leukemia, it's his second bell. And we all know, if you know anyone who's had cancer, and I've had several family members who've had cancer, the second time is far more aggressive than the first time. Uh, I mean, it's. I don't know how his condition is. If he can beat it, he, I think he can live because the treatment he's going to have is so good because of all the access with WWE, having the top doctors, and they've probably caught it early. Uh, so I, I think he could. I think he beat it. I don't think see him dying from it. Uh, but like you know, second time cancer, just it's always more aggressive. So again, my best wishes go to Roman, but my best wishes do not go out to this fucking company, who decides we're gonna exploit Roman Reigns' sickness to have Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins going back and forth. Seth Rollins comes on. I'm not a big fan of Seth on the mic. He's just never been a good promo. He comes out and Dean's in the on the like the. Seth's in the ring and Dean's basically in the crowd at the top, like at the top bowl, or to be the upper bowl. He's like at the top of the uh, the staircase, and they're going back and forth. And Rollins is ripping into him. He's furious with Ambrose. Ambrose just doesn't say anything. He just has a sinister look on his face. He's ripping into him, and uh, you know how could you do this? The day Roman announces he's ill, and you do this, it's like they're going to completely use Roman Reigns' uh, cancer to build up Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose. It tells you every this company is just ugh, it's just pathetic. I mean, if they were gonna, I didn't mind it as much. I mean, some people were really pissed off what happened last week. I didn't bother me as much. Because it was a good setup uh, when uh, Ambrose had turned on Rollins. It, it was good. I mean, it was, it was a shock. I know it sucks that they had to use, exploit Roman Reigns. But here, it's like, come on. They're really going to use this guy's illness as part of the storyline. Ugh, this fucking company. Like, it's whatever. I'm... Ugh. Uh, yeah. So, like, Dean leaves the arena and they could just end. The segment ends. Uh, Bobby Lashley sucks. Bobby and Leo Rush sucks. Uh, so next is Nia Jax and Ember Moon. And then Tamina comes out. Uh, I don't know. I, God, I don't need to see Tamina. Cause why isn't she released? Fucking Superfly. Ah, oh, fuck you, Jimmy Sucker, man. You have to fucking kill a chick, and now your fucking daughter's still stuck on WTV because of your dead ass. Fucking super fly. So, I don't know. The, the revival's losing. To, this, this show sucks. Yeah, okay, so it was uh, Ziggler and Apollo Crew. Ziggler wins. So, finally, the last segment, like, all oh, this bullshit. Ross, just, oh, man, so much bullshit on this show. So we finally end the show with Undertaker and Kane. Um, 
they uh, they come out and then uh, and uh, they're talking about how it's the end and it's gonna be the end and stuff. And eh, I'm I'm kind of bored hearing that. So finally, it ends with uh, Triple H comes out as with the DX. He's like Sean doesn't come out, but then Sean sneaks in the ring, hits Undertaker with Suja music, runs out of the ring before Kane can attack him, and that's it. And then Undertaker sits up, and that's kind of how Raw ends with the DX getting the upper hand. So it went the way it ends. It kind of makes you think is the Brothers of Destruction winning, but then again, Shawn Michaels is he going to lose on his uh, return match after eight and a half years? I don't know. It's just it sucks. Shawn Michaels is coming back for this fucking show, but. It is what it is. I, I, I don't even want to watch. I don't, I don't think. I, don't, I haven't decided. I have not decided if I'll watch the Saudi Arabia show, Crown Jewel. I, I haven't decided, but um, yeah. It's like, I was really, it's like, I was really happy with the company and everything. I was really, you know, really, really happy watching Evolution. It was such a positive show. It's like every single positive thing that came out of Evolution, it's going to like be the complete opposite with Crown Jewel.